Hello, and welcome to the Youth One Studios for this week's edition of the Youth One Sports Roundup, your source for in-depth youth sports coverage on the web. I'm Caitlin Lipkin, and this week we've got an exciting introduction to Youth One Lacrosse as we interview Pequannock Boys Junior Lacrosse Director Alan Geisel. But first, Youth One's football analyst Alan Papadines continues to scout the future of the gridiron in this week's edition of the Pops Report. Let's go out to the field and hear about a running back who's been tearing up the turf in the Carolinas. Hi, Caitlin. I've got a real eye-opener for you this week. I've been taking a hard look at Benny LeMay from the AYF National Champion Min Hill Chargers, and I think this running back could be the top running back in the class of 2016 from North Carolina. Benny is big. I mean big. He looks like a high school junior, and I'd love to see somebody tackle him one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think it's possible. Benny comes from a great pedigree as well. His older brother Christian is currently a quarterback at the University of Georgia. But the thing that I really like about Benny LeMay is the head on his shoulders. He's the type of athlete that someone could grow a team around. That's why this 2011 AYF national champion running back also played for the Georgia Future Stars team and to top it off was named the 2011 Youth One top running back prospect. Caitlin, Benny's going to be the next LeMay who will be filling the stands in North Carolina next year. Let's send it back to you in the studio. We certainly wish him the best of luck. And if you know a player like Benny, let us hear about him at youth1.com. But for now, we're moving on with the stopwatches and clipboards as we head out to our basketball analyst, Christopher Hunt, for this week's edition of Nothing But Net. There are a lot of big name players in the class of 2016, but none of them match name with size better than number one prospect Kalia Turner. Standing at a commanding 6 foot 9 inches and weighing in at 230 pounds, this 8th grader is a king of the paint with his incredible wingspan. Due to his superior size and skill, the Louisiana native spent his past year playing center for Riverside High School and holding his own against older competition. He was also seen tearing up the camp circuit, most notably at the Junior All-American camp where he became the star of the show. With his long arms, Turner possesses the ability to dominate on the boards and block any shots in the lane. Even though he has barely reached his potential, Turner is arguably the most watched prospect in the class of 2016, Caitlin. Let's see if he can continue to live up to the hype. Back to you in the studio. Well, we're sure that a 6'9", 8th grader will have a bright future ahead of him, Christopher. We can't wait to follow his progress. Speaking of progress, if there's one baseball organization that produces greatness year after year, it has to be the East Cobb Baseball Club from Marietta, Georgia. We'll take it out to our baseball expert, Matt Carl, as he tells us more. Caitlin, every spring weekend, thousands of youth baseball players lace up their cleats and take to the diamond just like this one. For the East Cobb Baseball Club out of Marietta, Georgia, they recently had a chance to defend their home field and show everyone why they're one of the best organizations in the country. East Cobb has five teams listed in Youth One's national baseball rankings between the 11U and 14U age groups, so it's no surprise when they put the bats on their shoulders for their past Astros Invitational that they took home titles in the 14U, 13U, and 12U divisions. When it comes to forging tradition, there may be no better club than East Cobb. For years now, they have been a pillar of excellence from their oldest teams down to their youngsters, and the growth and progress that comes along with the organization has produced top-tier baseball players every year. East Cobb has seen plenty of their players go on to the majors, and their alumni list reads like an MLB all-star lineup. Stars such as Buster Posey, Brian McCann, Nick Markakis, and Jason Hayward are just some of the talent to come out of the East Cobb organization, and the way that they've been playing, they won't be the last. If your team or club has a big weekend and you think you could stack up against the nation's best, let us know at youth1.com. Until then, we'll be waiting in the dugout. Now back to you in the studio, Caitlin. Baseball isn't the only sport keeping kids outdoors in the spring. Lacrosse is now one of the most popular and fastest growing sports across all seasons and age groups. We're lucky to have Bequanic Boys Junior Lacrosse Director Alan Geisel with us on the field of play to discuss his teams, the rise of the sport, and to share some tips for youth lacrosse players. Thanks for being with us, Alan. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Can you tell us how you got your start in lacrosse? Sure. I retired from uh, high school coaching, uh, lacrosse coaching, about 10 years ago, and I uh, got involved with the program through a uh, phone call to somebody put an ad in the paper, Michael Cherenson, who's the president of Pequannock Junior Lacrosse. And uh, we sat together, along with a few other people in his kitchen, and uh, Pequannock Junior Lacrosse was born at that time. Sound like you've had some great experiences. How have you personally seen the culture of the sport grow during your time here? Uh, it was just 10 years ago, I, I think there might have been a, a 
a couple of sticks in town. And now I, I drive through town and I see kids walking through the streets, carrying sticks, playing the game in the schoolyards, in the, in the front yards, and backyards, in the streets. So I'm very proud of that, how, how much it has grown over the years. That's great. Now, a lot of our viewers are aspiring players, and they're wondering, what are some of the key fundamentals to improve your game? Any advice for them? Uh, just the proper mechanics for stick work. A cradle it seems like such a, a, a babyish thing for kids to practice, but it, it, it's like dribbling a basketball. If you can't dribble a basketball, it's going to be hard for you to good, be a good basketball player. On a more personal note, how are your teams looking this year? Um, when we put our A team on the field, I think we can play with anybody in the state. That includes the Mountain Lakes, the Ridgewoods, anybody. Well, we certainly wish you guys the best of luck this year, and we look forward to following your progress. Thank you very much. We're moving from lacrosse sticks to softball bats as we hit it out to Dan Frazier, who's got insider info on the elite softball teams that competed in Arizona's Touch Em All tournament. Kaylin, it was an outstanding tournament this weekend, especially for Team Arizona, whose 12U squad ended up taking home the big trophy. The team was led by Anna Krosky, who went a ridiculous 11 for 13 at the plate while allowing just a single run from the mound. I suggest you let that sink in. Team Arizona faced off against the Extreme Fast Pitch Club in the finals and ended up outscoring them 5 to 1, making Team Arizona the last team out of 27 standing. The win extends Team Arizona's current win streak to a monstrous 14 consecutive games and boosts their USSSA points total to an impressive 695 points. Do yourself a favor and keep watching this team. I see big things coming from the desert. Always good hearing from you, Caitlin. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks. Now we're going to head to the mats with wrestling expert Ryan Lance, where he'll fill us in on all the action that took place at the Utah State Championships as he sheds light on some of the top performers and their accomplishments. What do you have for us, Ryan? Caitlin, at the Utah Freestyle State Championships, two wrestlers that we rated very highly here at Youth One showed why they're the best in the West. Cameron Hunsaker dominated the 84-pound bracket, finishing the event undefeated, and I don't know if there's anybody in the country who can match his mental toughness. Last year, he was the only wrestler in the nation to capture all four of the prestigious Tour of America events, and that's because he's as sharp as they come. The other Youth One top prospect to show up big was 77-pound champion Jackson Cole from Colville, Utah. Colville just sounds like a tough guy town, and Jackson was the toughest 77-pound wrestler, capturing both of his matches. His biggest strengths are his conditioning and skills on his feet. Cole often has his opponents beaten with a quick first step before they even hit the mat. If you can beat him to the punch, you might just have a chance, but nobody has in a while. He's been too skilled for the competition. Caitlin, I don't expect things to change for Hunter Kerr and Cole anytime soon, but I want to see someone step up as we're always looking for emerging talent. Back to you in the studio. Well, that wraps up another exciting edition of the Youth One Sports Roundup. Tune in next time, fans. You don't want to miss out on all the top youth sports news. I'm Caitlin Lipkin, and on behalf of Alan, Chris, Matt, Dan, Ryan, and our whole team, stay logged on to youth1.com, and thanks for watching.